Hello, my name is Angela from Angela Simpson Functional Medicine Physiotherapy. And I'd like to talk to you today about low libido and what the causes are, where it's coming from, and how you can fix it. Because if you have had low libido potentially for a long time, it may be affecting several aspects of your life currently. And if you fast forward down the road five to 10 years from now and you're still experiencing it, it could be affecting several more aspects of your life than it even is now. And so low libido can be quite frustrating, probably for you as well as if you have a partner, it's frustrating all around. Because often even if you feel like you have a connection with your partner, you, you care about them, but you don't have that level of intimacy, it actually does really start to affect your relationship. And so you're probably looking for solutions not only for yourself, but also for the relationship that you have with your partner. And the reality of it is, is if you don't actually figure out why you have low libido and how to fix it, it won't necessarily just affect relationships with your partner. It's probably going to affect relationships with other family members as well. Um, your frustrations can sometimes come out on other people, not just your partner, um, as well as potentially even your relationships socially and at work. And so it's really important to figure out why you have the low libido. Now, there are a few common causes. So often women will do their research and they look online and they think it's related to low sex hormones. And although this is partially true, it's important to figure out if you do have low sex hormones, where it's coming from, why it's happening. And quite commonly, it has to do with reasons that aren't most likely thought of. So often when there is inflammation in the gut, this is a really common reason for the hormone production levels to go down or the hormones to just be utilized down the wrong pathways that don't actually allow you to maintain or have libido. And so it is important to figure out if you do have gut dysfunction and how to fix it to actually help you improve your libido. As well, sometimes women don't realize it, but if they have a lot of stress in their life and there actually is high cortisol production, which is our stress management hormone basically, it will actually alter your libido as well. Because what the body does instinctually is it does start to steal other hormones to make cortisol to keep up with the stress levels. And so if you do have chronic stress and it is you know, either in the acute or low grade phase, the body actually doesn't even know how to distinguish between this. Any sort of stress that is ongoing, the body will start to change how it is utilizing its hormonal systems. And so it is really important to identify this because it is a very common cause. As well, sometimes there is a genetic predisposition to this, believe it or not. So sometimes people will have genetics that actually do um, make them more susceptible to a condition called estrogen dominance. And what this can do is it can allow the hormone levels to become out of balance. And even when the hormone levels aren't necessarily all low, but they're out of balance relative to each other, this can also cause low libido. So it is really important to figure out the root cause of why you have the low libido, why you potentially have low sex hormone production, or the hormones aren't being utilized along the right pathways for you to have that libido. One other cause actually has to do with your neurotransmitters. And those are your chemical messengers that are produced that give you sensations in your brain emotionally. And there are some specific ones that actually trigger libido. And neurotransmitters are primarily produced in the gut. So again, back to the gut. If the gut is potentially in dysfunction for some reason, it's inflamed, there's some history there that's caused some damage to the gut lining or the immune system, potentially you know, use of antibiotics in the past, um, some viruses or bacteria that you've been exposed to, parasites somewhere along the way. Um, this can all actually affect your gut function and it can affect your neurotransmitter production that actually allows the brain to signal libido. So you can see there are several different potential causes and often there is more than one for people and so it's really important for you if you are dealing with this to figure out what your root cause is. And then if you fast forward five or 10 years from now, where are you going to be if you still have this low libido? You know, potentially if you are in perimenopause and you go through menopause with a low libido, a few things can happen. You can definitely end up having more symptoms as you transition through menopause if your sex hormone levels are lower than they should be for your age. As well, if they are too low and you do move into menopause with them lower than normal, you might be more susceptible to certain conditions or diseases. You might be more prone to developing osteoporosis, which is a bone condition, which can develop from having hormone levels that are too low, especially estrogen. As well, you might be more susceptible to certain heart conditions as well, which can also be related to hormone systems being out of balance, especially postmenopausally. So it is important to be thinking down the road as well, what potentially could happen if you don't deal with this issue. 
And so if you want to learn more about how you can fix your libido to help you get your relationship back on track and help prevent disease in the future, please feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to have a free 45 minute consult to talk to you about this and see if we can help you figure out the root cause of how to fix this, not only now, but over the long term. You can reach me at my website, www.angelasimpsonfunctionalmedicine.ca. Thanks for watching.